Good afternoon. afternoon. What did I promise myself is no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I won't pretend to be a Malcolm or one of the big preachers. I just want to share from my heart, you know. Come on. Yeah, this afternoon, I want to be talking about gratitude. And uh, before we go, before we do, let's go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Father, we are so grateful that we have you as our Lord, and you have given us the privilege to sit together to share your word. We pray you speak to us from your very word, and let your word move our hearts afterwards. Mm-hmm. Pray that God, at the end of the day, will be grateful for the things you've been doing, and for the more you're going to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, pray thanksgiving. Amen. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> Gratitude. Can anyone give us what do you understand? The definition of what is not my gratitude. I know there are different ways you want, may want to view the word, but let's just hear from the crowd. Right. One or two? Okay, we. Um, appreciating what you have. Appreciating what you have. Thank you. The key word is appreciation, right? Alright, another one? Yeah. Thankful for what you have. Being thankful, okay? A state of being. A state of being. Okay. All right. I mean, thank you all for your uh, sharing. Uh, the Webster defines gratitude as a feeling of thankful appreciation for favors and benefits received. All right. It says a warm appreciation, sorry, warm appreciative response of kindness. Um, one of the things that gratitude is both an attitude and an action. Yeah. You can show gratitude through action and through the attitude you express. I don't have to say the word, but your man and your conduct reveal, you know, your your your, your feeling, your the, the sense of gratitude. See, as Christians, gratitude is an offering precious in the sight of God. We need to have this in our heart that God really loves to see us. Expressing how we appreciate the good things that we do in our lives. One thing I must say at this point is, you know, being grateful doesn't come naturally to some of us, some, to, to us as human beings sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really come naturally. It may take, uh, I mean, sometimes we tend to look at the bigger picture and tend to overlook the little things. Yeah. Yeah. that are happening in our lives. Yeah. And by so doing, we miss out, you know, in the, in the things that we need to be grateful about. Um, I want to, uh, I want us to turn our Bibles to Luke chapter 17. I read from verse 11 to 19. It's a very, very popular scripture. I've tattooed this message, A Heart of Gratitude. And my first point is, A Heart of Gratitude is Uncommon. Right. So then I'm going to read from verse 11 to 19. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give thanks, and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Um, this is a very you know, popular story in the Bible. It talked about ten men who were infected with leprosy. And um, they approached Jesus along the border between Samaria and, um, and Galilee. 
Now, leprosy at this time is, a, is regarded as an infection that makes somebody ceremonially unclean. Mm -hmm. And as such, they are treated as a social outcast. They are not allowed within the community of healthy, normal human beings. So they have a colony or outside the, the, the camp where they, they keep themselves. And because of this state, there's a lot of stigma that goes with, you know, being leprous. There's a lot of, um, I mean, they, because they're separated, they don't get to meet with their family, they don't get to meet with their friends. Mm -hmm. They're in a state of, I'll say, depravity because they're not able to enjoy life as normal human beings. Mm -hmm. So this why when they saw Jesus at a distance, they were calling on him. I mean, I mean, the very word they said was, they stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Alright, like I said, my point here is, gratitude is, un I mean, a heart of gratitude is uncommon. Now, once an infected person is healed, from what we've read in the scripture, is required to go show himself to the priest. In every instance in the Bible where Jesus healed someone with leprosy, he always insisted, go and show yourself to the priest. Now, the function of the priest, thank you, is, is basically to certify that the person is healed. You know, after the healing, there is there is need for that certification so that the person cannot be absorbed back into the into the society to be welcomed back. Without the priest pronouncing that this person is healed, you won't be welcomed back into the society. You still have that stigma, you still have that feeling of yes, you are a leprous person. So it's very it's very important that whoever gets healed go show himself or herself to the priest. Now, um, for reference, you can may want to write this down. If you see Matthew 8, verse 2, and uh, Leviticus 14, from verse 2 to end, it talks about the processes at this time. Now, I want us to look at what are the common, I mean, what is common to the 10 leprous people here, from the passage we have just read. So the 10, the 10 of them were all united in realizing their state of health, their state of being, of not being, um, of not being perfect, of not being in a good state to enable them to be within the society. So they realized that they needed Jesus. Yeah. And that's why when they saw Jesus walking by, they called him and said, Jesus, come and help us. Another thing that is common to the teleprops men is that they called out in a loud voice. In other words, they prayed. I mean, you and I, when we know there's a need in our lives, what do we do? We go to God in prayer. And this is just similar to what the leprous people did. They were to call out to, to call out to Christ, please help us. So most time when we are going feel that sense of need, we're about to go to God in prayers. Okay? Now, one other thing that's common to the ten of them is that when Jesus told them, Go show yourself to the priest, the ten of them obeyed by going to meet the priest. Mm -hmm. So they had all this in common. Alright? And they, they obeyed the instruction. One other final thing that was common to them from what I read is the ten of them were healed. Alright? Because they've obeyed, they received the healing they wanted. But what is uncommon is the fact that only one person came back out of ten to thank Jesus. And it just shows that, you know, that sense of gratitude was not common. Probably they were so excited the fact that now they're going to be reunited with their family, they're going to be reunited with their number of life that they have missed. They were looking at a bigger picture right. of what will happen after their state of health. But they forgot a little thing that, well, this problem has been solved. And it was caused by this man, Jesus. And all I had to do is to go back and thank him. All right? It was only one person that came back to praise God in a loud voice. Remember, they called Jesus in a very loud voice when they were in their state of ill health. <laughs> But only one person was to come back with the, loud, the same loud voice, the same attitude with which he went to God in prayer to come and thank him. Usually as human beings, I mean like I said, I mean, it's, it's common to us want to look at something. Sometimes when we pray about a point and God is asking that point, we're looking at something else that we want God to do. Yes. And not realizing that even the little one we've asked, he has achieved it, yeah. we've got to appreciate him for it. 
So it's not a very common thing, but it's quite a good thing because Jesus appreciated the one single leprous man that was healed that came back to him. He was quite happy about that. You know, um, there's this saying where I come from that um, Tom Adi Oh, yeah. That one. I remember. <laughs> Can you just say that? <laughs> Yeah, it says when a child is able to express thanks, thanks for receiving the gifts, he's going to get more. You see? And when this one leprous man came back to Jesus, what happened? He got blessed. We're told that Jesus told, I mean, let me show the passage. One of them, verse 15, said, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And it was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found return? And give praise to God, except this foreigner. Okay, verse 19 says, Then he said to him, Rise and go, your faith has made you well. It was the only one that had that direct contact with Jesus. Remember, they were all standing at the far distance because of their state of ill health. Yeah. But when he came out to give thanks, he had a close contact with Jesus. He was able to get that connection with Jesus. One thing um, I, I realized while, while doing, reading this passage is that, I mean, personally, I, I tend to be like the nine myself, not remembering to thank God. I mean, there are some things in our lives that we need to thank God about. I want us to just, on our own, think about it. What are those things? that we've overlooked, that we need to be thankful to God about. It's not just God, even the people around us, the people that God has put in our lives. What are those things we need to be thankful to God about? Those people, those little things. And if you're, if you're to write a list of things that you want to be, you know, you want to show gratitude about in your life, what are the kind of things you're going to write? I mean, I talked about this, and some of the things I, I wrote that was that I'm, I'm, I'm thankful to God because I have a gracious God, all right? I have a, because I have a loving and caring wife. I'm thankful to God for this. I have a healthy family. I have an abundant life in Jesus, okay? I'm also thankful to God because I've got friends in Christ, okay? I'm thankful to God for today. I'm also thankful to God because of the answered prayers. Because we go to God in prayers, but do not to thank Him for those prayers when they are answered. And it's very common when we look around us, you know, the weather, I mean, sometimes one of the first things I realized is when I came to, to the UK, we talk about the weather a lot. <laughs> and, and sometimes somebody just comes and says, How is the weather today? They say, It's horrible. Just because it's raining. <laughs> Meanwhile, somewhere, um, somebody is praying for God to rain, to send down the rain. Yeah. But people are grumbling, like, Oh, it's horrible. It's raining today. <laughs> and then when the, weather, when the sun is hot, Oh, it's too hot. <laughs> I mean, it's the kind of attitude we have. Now, when it's cold, we say it's too cold. Now, I know in, in, in Canada, in the US, it can be as much as minus 30, 40 degrees. But here, I'm not sure it's up to maybe minus 7. I think that's the best I've said, the worst I've seen. But there's still a lot of complaints. <laughs> I mean, we've got to know that, you see, rather than complaining, let's be more thankful to God. Yeah, yeah. Let's be more appreciative of Him because, you see, our, our time doesn't really change His attitude towards us. He's going to bless us anyway. But He appreciates it when we come back to Him in thankfulness yes. to appreciate, I mean, to say, God, I thank you. Mm -hmm. And just like to our fellow human beings, we, we appreciate when our, our spouses or family members come back and say, thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing that. That can help us to appreciate more about God. My second point is a heart of gratitude is blessed in service. And uh, I would like us to open the Bibles to Galatians 6 verse 2. You may be able to make the message very short. I just... Uh, <laughs> Verse 2 reads, um, I 
Jesus the Galatians? Okay, 6 2. That's written in uh, so 6. To carry each other's burdens, and in this way, sorry, yeah, carry each other's burdens, and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Now, um, I've talked about service. Sorry, I missed out in the talking about the uh, hope day. Of course, I intend to talk about the hope day at this time. But we're talking about service. Um, as Christians, one of our purpose on earth is to serve God. All right? And we serve Him and fulfill the purpose of our existence by serving others, by ministering to one another. Yes. See, God expects to have that relationship whereby we glorify His name through our association with one another. Mm -hmm. Right? See, by this, we glorify God, bless others, and bless ourselves. See, gratitude enables us to be, fruit, to be faithful in our God-given task of reaching out to others and, ma and making a difference in their lives. You see, our relationship as Christians, it's about, you know, talking to one another, encouraging one another, praying for one another, yeah. calling each other higher to serve, to, to appreciate God, to, 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 you know, yeah, to worship God more. Uh, before I go to the point about hope, let's open our Bible to Colossians chapter 3. I read from verse 12 to 17. Yeah. Colossians 3. Colossians. Colossians. So therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you, and over all these virtues, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Since, as members of one body, you were called to peace and be thankful, let the word of Christ dwell in you, in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, giving thanks to God, the Father, through Him. Um, sorry. Um. All right. <laughs> yes. Um, a heart of gratitude is characterized by compassion, <laughs> kindness, humility, and gentleness. Just from, from what we read in the scriptures. Now, it, it's not also not. It's not very easy, you know, to be compassionate sometimes. Especially when you look at your situation, you probably have some challenges ahead of you, and you realize that, well, other people are in need around you. Now, the hope day is going to be on the, 6th, on the um, 17th of June, in just about six days from now. Yes. And what we've decided as a family group, sorry, um, was it what, the, what the hope day, the, 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 uh, the group Organizing it, what we decided was that we're going to reach out within our community, so that the people within those our community can feel the impact of hope. And to help us, those of us who worship here, we've decided we're going to be helping the Berkshire Women's Aid. Now, Berkshire Women's Aid is about helping people who are faced with domestic violence. Now. Domestic violence comes in different form, but it's, it's an abusive, most of the time it comes from an abusive relationship that they cannot go back to their home because of the danger it tends to portend for them. So what the Berkshire Women's Aid does is it provides refuge homes for people who are affected by you know, um, domestic violence and until when those problems are resolved, they are usually received, cared for giving things to make them comfortable and to, become, and to forget the kind of problems they, they, they had where they're coming from. 
Now, what we decided is, when well, we spoke to the um, to the Black Share Women's Aid, and they talked about providing welcome packs. Now, this welcome pass is to is what they give to the um, the people that comes for help to make them feel comfortable. Like I said, usually contains shower gel, contains um, sanitary things to help them feel. You know, to, let me just quickly read through the list of what this entails. Um, I know I've sent an email to everyone, but I received an email from uh, the, the people involved. So welcome packs are provided to each family when they arrive in refuge. We also occasionally give a pack to each to rich families who also have nothing. All right? A typical pack will contain comb, toothbrush, toothpaste, flannel, shampoo, conditioner, shower, shower gel, and liquid soap. We also welcome wash packs to put them in. Now, this is it. When we look at our situation, we find that we're so privileged. God has really blessed us abundantly. We may not be where we want to be, but when we look around us, we find that there are a lot of people who are praying to be in our situation. Yeah. These are the people yeah. that we're talking about. Sometimes we don't realize how blessed we are when we go home after work and we have a happy family to welcome us. We have people can laugh with, we can share those great moments with. So that we don't appreciate it when we go to, when we go to sleep with a peaceful mind and wake up in the morning the next day to go to our work. Some people don't have this. Some they think about the troubles around them and they and their health fail them. These are the kind of people we're looking at. And what we need to also realize that no matter how much we want to show our gratitude to God. We cannot give money to God because God doesn't spend pounds, dollars, <laughs> like you. We cannot give those things. But you see, we will make a positive impact in the life of people who are so less privileged around us. We are causing them to thank their God. And that is the only way we are able to make, I mean that's another way we are able to make impact in our gratitude to God. And this is what this hope day is all about. We want to be able to make those, we want to touch people's lives with what God has blessed us with. Because it's a privilege to have. So we want to touch people's lives by coming up with the packs. Now we decided we're going to raise about 100 packs for, for the, for the, uh, for the uh, Bashia women's. Minimum. Minimum, yeah, minimum. Now if, if you feel blessed to provide this pack. Now there's some other thing they said they wanted, which I, I, I'm not sure I put in the email. It says they want bath towels, either new or good quality second hand. And I often need it as its as its personal hygiene materials. Uh, we have a rather I just read the mail. We have rather a baby boom recently. So we never say no to nappies, all sizes, and accept half open bags of nappies as the mothers find nappies far too expensive. All kinds of baby products welcome from food milk or, or wipes and creams. If we have a summer, if we have a summer this year, high factor sun cream is also welcome. Now, nobody should feel compelled or feel pressure to give. But please, when we're doing this, let's know that we're going to be bringing smiles to some people's face. And you're going to, we're going to gladden their hearts. And in their quiet time, they're going to be thanking their God because they'll see it as God provided. And it, yes. it's indeed a privilege to be used by God to meet other people's needs. Yeah. Thank you very much.